All right, uh, periodic table, uh, period, periodicity. This is a little bit of revision because I had to. So the ionization energy, I'm hoping you're familiar with. All right, before you do the test, and at the end of it, make sure you've read through those. And if there's anything you can't do or haven't done, let me know because that's what's going to be on the test. That's the Bible of what's on the test. Okay? You always check your objectives. That's how you study. All right, well, you, you make sure you've read through those just to double check you know everything. All right? That will guarantee a seven if you can tip off all those things. So, first of all, um, this is revision from last thing. Atomic number is a Z, mass number is an A. All right, something I'm not quite sure I can always remember. All right, if I wasn't a chemistry teacher, I wouldn't be able to remember that at all. All right, if it wasn't for the fact that I was always saying it, I probably would have no idea. So, it's probably really hard for you to remember, I'm assuming. All right, number of protons, it does equal the number of electrons just because it's an atom, but as soon as it becomes an ion, the number of electrons will be different because it's either gained or lost electrons. Uh, this is also revision here as well, the SPDs. Uh, so you can either learn it that the 4S goes to 3D, which I don't recommend, or you learn the table that I showed you how to do from theory level two, uh, topic two. Um, so uh, groups, uh, columns, periods, rows, uh, you're also meant to know that the, the labeling, so alkali metals, transition metals, halogens, noble gases, all right? I'm going to jump a little bit because you're going to have to memorize some equations, all right? So I'm jumping to some other slide further on. Alkali means uh, when it reacts with water, it forms an alkali solution. This will then be the opposite. So an alkali is a base that's soluble. All right, these are called alkaline earth metals, which is the same thing, alkali, alkali. So you know the answer already. If you mix these metals with water, it's going to give you a base. And the opposite is the non-metals. If you mix non-metal, specifically non-metal oxides with water, they, they form acids. All right, so there are obviously chemical trends here that we're learning. Okay? Uh, here are the electron shells. This is how you work out what sort of iron is going to form, and this is going to give you a model to explain things, because this model uh, is wrong, but it's a heck of a lot easier than SPDFs. Okay? So we use this to explain everything, because it's simpler, it's easier to understand. So just be aware for revision, that's missing one electron, it wants to gain one, so these four become negative one, negative two, plus one, plus two. Okay, the rest in between can get complicated. All right, uh, and that's for standard level. So we're going to go into more complexity in the high level. All right. Um, stop me if there's any questions. Are there any questions? All right, I'm going very fast. This is all key stage three. Key stage three, conductors of heat and electricity, malleable, ductile, shiny, oxidized, could be key stage three or semi-new. So that loses electrons. So they all become plus cations. Uh, Non-metals. Similar, it should be revision, but they reduced that IGCSE really gaining electrons so they become negative. Well, I don't understand the difference right. between malleable and ductile. Uh, it's very, very similar. Ductile is specifically just drawn into a wire, so it's just the same as malleable, it's just a shape that's a wire. Okay? So um, it, they are, they overlap. Malleable and ductile. Alright? Um, so here we go, once more, just another picture. Uh, just be aware that hydrogen is an exception because it's not really an atom, it's not really an element, it's just a proton. A H plus is just a proton. So if you look over here, uh, the atomic mass unit's one. So it only has one proton and no neutrons. Uh, and then as soon as it becomes an ion and loses its electron, there's nothing left. All right, it doesn't have any electrons or neutrons, it's just got a proton, so it's a floating proton. So that's why um, hydrogen acts very strange. You can notice it's pink here. Is not metal. Uh, sometimes it acts as a metal, sometimes it acts as non metal. So see hydrogen as an exception. Okay? Uh, it's generally called a non metal. Alright, but it acts like a metal sometimes, but it really isn't an element at all. It's just a subatomic particle. Okay? Hydrogen, yeah. Especially when it's a when it's a high. Alright? Um, so 3.2. Alright, so that was one lesson done. What? Uh, that's just revision. What? Yeah? That was revision. All right, uh, 3.2, atomic radio. Now we learn new stuff, all right? So, why does it get bigger as it goes down? It gets bigger because they're larger shells. All right, so of course, they're in a different shell, so they're a larger shell on the outside, so that's why it gets bigger. Problem, why does it get smaller as it goes across? Because it's the same shell, so they're all the same distance, 
but the nucleus is getting more and more positive, so the, so the electrons on the outside are getting pulled closer and closer and closer in, like gravity. All right? So that's why they get smaller as they go across the period and get larger as they go down. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, that's atomic radius. Uh, next one, maybe. Atomic radii. This one's a little bit nastier because now you add electrons or minus electrons, so you can jump up and jump down shells. So originally, lithium was here, all right, but it loses, uh, where is it? There it is normally, all right. Uh, then here, it loses an electron, so it jumps down a shell, so it becomes a lot smaller. That's the case with all the metals, all right. When they become ions, they're losing electrons, so they're jumping down a shell, so they become smaller, all right. Now, these ones here do the opposite. They gain an electron. So here it was the original size is here, 0.73. It jumps up to 1.4 because it's gained enough electrons to form a complete shell. So the, the non-metals are increasing, gaining a full shell, jumping a shell, really getting a full shell, and these ones are dropping a full shell. So ions are different to atoms in their, their radions, the radion. Okay? All right. First, ionization energy. We did this in topic two, so if you're not familiar with this, go read, go listen to topic two. I just did a 25 minute video, which will get deleted in a year or two, because I did it this morning and I haven't had coffee yet. All right, fastest video I've ever made. This is gonna be the new fastest video I've ever made. All right, the second fastest video was this morning. All right, uh, so ionization energy, again, it's all repeat. All right, so the anomalies between jumping between uh, the P's when you get the mutual re repulsion or within the, the sub-level when you go from a TS, a 2S to a slightly higher 2P, you have to use the words nuclear charge, electron shielding, and distance. You have to say those words exactly. Write the word nuclear charge in your answer every single time. And electron shielding, use the technical terms, all right? It's the only way to guarantee you get the right answer when you explain it. Um, so ionization energy, I have swapped a little. All right, uh, you need to also be able to write the reaction. So another new one for this topic is electron affinity. So that's how well it can gain an electron. Uh, so obviously you would, well maybe not obviously, you can see that these elements gain electrons the easiest. And why is that? All right, you can see the numbers here. Electronegativity, 3.5, 4 is the best. All right, I think there's another one here. This one gives a little bit clearer. All right, you can see uh, that there is that there's an increase here. Why are these ones here so good at gaining electrons? Mm -hmm. They right. only have one more. Yeah. Yes, because they are very close to a full mm -hmm. shell and they want to gain one. But why does oxygen gain better than fluorine? Why, how are oxygen dif different? Oxygen, fluorine. Why does fluorine gain an electron easier? Because it's exactly the same shell, but these guys have more and more protons. So that's why it's increasing. Why are these this set lower than this set? This set's lower because it's one shell further away. All right, so the proton, the, the nucleus, and the, the outside electrons are further and further away. So the, the, the ability of the nuclear charge to attract an electron is less and less because of electron shielding as you go down and because of distance as you go down. Okay, so that makes this one in the corner here, the one with the least, uh, the smallest shell, uh, uh, doesn't have the best nuclear charge, all right, but it does have the smallest shell and the, and the smallest distance, okay, which makes the biggest difference. I've told you every single force is the same. All right, distance is more important than size. All right, and you can see that demonstrated here. That has got way more protons on it. But because of the distance, it's not as good as this that has a lot less protons, right? A lot, a lot smaller nuclear charge. So that's the electronegativity. Uh, this will be covered in topic four. I might leave it for that, okay? Uh, so because of that, uh, because these are always positive, these are very negative, uh, the, the degree of sharing, all right? So the electronegativity values will be very important for you to determine if it's a covalent or ionic bond later. So yes? um, the distance of the like, shell from the nucleus is more important than the charge? Yes. All right. You can see here uh, that this here is the distance being accounted for and a massive increase in nuclear charge, all right? 
but it's still getting smaller. Here, uh, the distance is the same, but the nuclear charge is increasing. All right, and so, so that's the effect there. All right, it's a balancing act. A balance between distance and nuclear charge. That's why you don't have to know it. You have to be able to explain it. But all this data is being turned into data. All right. Uh, it would be very difficult to predict those sort of things. It would be a very difficult mathematical formula, all right? That would predict that accurately. All right, uh, comparing electronegativities. All right, so this is a summary. Uh, it's this, you should be able to go through the logic of what we just talked about to uh, determine atomic radius, ionization, electron affinity. So everything I just said, you should be able to explain it, and those explanations would be able to tell you, be able to predict those values. Uh, if you can't understand this and you're stuck, you can always go to your data booklet and have a look at these values to see whether they're increasing or decreasing. All right, but the explanations won't be in your data booklet. You'll have to be able to explain that yourself. All right, how are we going? Uh, alkali metals. Uh, why does the boiling point decrease? Because there is a huge shell over here, uh, and this is not. So these are quite compact uh, and stick together better. All right, uh, and these are quite large, so they don't stick together. All right, because the only thing that's going to keep cesium from having a high boiling point is the attraction here. All right, and whereas lithium is quite small, uh, so the distance of this positive nuclei to these outside electrons is quite strong. All right, but this positive nuclei and this electron, the attraction between this is quite a large distance. All right, so it's not very dense and at the boiling point and melting point are much lower. All right, so you need to use those key terms to explain why the boiling point and melting points decrease. You can double check whether it's true or not by the data book that will tell you the actual values of melting boiling points. Okay, uh, for that same reason, I'm sorry, you'll have to memorize these equations if you didn't learn them and make sense already. The demonstrations, remember when we blew up sodium and it made it acidic? All right, so that's where it's coming from. The hydrogen blows up, the acidity comes from sodium hydroxide. Same with this here, this hopefully uh, you'd be able to guess that because they seem like fairly common products and reactions. If that doesn't make sense to you, we'll have to memorize that. All right, those equations need to be learned. It gets worse, let me jump down to that before I end. This is the last PowerPoint and the worst one. Uh, all of those reactions need to be memorized. All right, they are logic in the fact that you've already memorized sulfuric acid and sulfurous acid and Phosphorus acid, phosphoric acid, uh, and you're aware of those things as bases. They're metals, so they go to bases. What, what, what's the most common base? Sodium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide, of course. These are non metals, so they go to acids. What are the most obvious acids? Uh, phosphoric acid, sulfuric acid. All right, that is just the trick, so I've written that in red. All right, so actually, be aware of how it's written. That's a solid, liquid, aqueous. You should be able to suss those out without memorizing them. You should be able to guess them, that's what I expect. I expect you to be able to work it out. I don't expect you to memorize these things. All right, I'll test you on it next lesson. Amphoteric means it could be acidic or basic, that's aluminium. It can go either way. Uh, water can too, by the way. So that's the last slide. Let me just go up to the next, the last, the second last thing then, uh, is you need to know whether the, whether the uh, halogens will react or not, okay? Now, this here is better at grabbing electrons than this one. And this one is better than this one. So if you put these things together, uh, you're going to find out uh, whether they're going to react or not. Okay, so uh, there's a difference in color uh, and there's a difference in melting boiling points because they have more and more electrons. So they're, they're diatomic molecules, so it's F2, Cl2, Cr2, I2. The more, the more London dispersion forces there are, the better they stick together. So that's why they go from gas to liquid to solid, all right? Bromine and mercury are the only liquids in the entire periodic table, so that should help you, all right? The gases are all over here mainly, so everything else is solid. Um, so the color also increases. So how do you know which one's gonna react if you put the two together? Which one's more reactive, chlorine or bromine? Which one grabs electrons better? Chlorine has a higher electronegativity, so that's what it does, it will react. You'll get chlorine, you'll get this forming here. The other question is if I reverse the arrow. If I react chlorine and bromine, will that react? Is bromine have a better ability to steal electrons? No, so it won't be able to do it. So you write, if the arrow is this way, you write no reaction. It's not going to work. Okay, 